So this is the processed fiber that's been carded into roving. That's what this is. And you can see it pulls right apart. So in order to turn it into yarn, we need to spin it, which is what the spinning wheel is doing. What I'm doing with my hands is called drawing. And this is called a short draw. And I'm basically controlling how much of the twist, the spinning wheel is twisting the fiber, turning it into, um, we don't refer to this as yarn, we refer to, refer to it as a single. Um, and it can be used as yarn, but oftentimes you'll put more of them together and ply them together. It's a process that takes a lot of practice. It's not something you can just sit down and do. You might notice that I'm spinning barefoot, and you always spin either in your bare feet or your stocking feet. Um, you have to fill your spinning wheel in order to be able to understand how it's working. To, the tension is very sensitive and um, not only to protect your wheel because it's fine pieces of wood but also you need to be able to fill your wheel and the, the only part of you that's touching it is your feet. My name's Megan Wright, and I'm so I'm a fiber artist. Knitting is a family tradition. My grandmother taught me when I was eight years old. <clears throat> All the women in my family knit. When we were younger, we were always around my grandmother, who always has knitting with her, always. And uh, we would see the beautiful yarns and the beautiful things that she would knit us, and we would want to touch them and fill them, and we would want her to teach us. And she would say, no, not until you're eight years old. If we were sitting around watching TV or whatever, that all the women were knitting. Um, and my grandma was there to help if there were any problems. And as we got older, we found that we really enjoyed that time and we sought it out. So now, anytime, so I live about 800 miles away from my family. And I get to see them once or twice a year. But they're, whenever I am there, you can be sure that my sister, my mother, my grandmother and I, and sometimes um, some other women, might we taught my sister-in-law to knit because you have to knit if you're going to be a woman in our family. <laughs> um, and then we have friends, knitting just has bonded us together. We will carve out specific time to be together, to knit together. We would go to a pub in Seattle and we had a table that was set aside for us. There were about 15 of us. It was sort of tucked away. And I know that the bartender and the waitress thought we were just a little bit crazy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we would order food and, for, and drinks for those of us that drink and, and sit and knit for several hours. I normally knit on circular needles. And you can see that they're attached like this. They're, there's two needles, but they are completely attached. People may be more familiar with needles that look like this. And these are traditional knitting needles, and they come in a variety of sizes. You can see. Um, and the length is not as important as the width. When we refer to needle sizes, we're referring to the width, not the length. Things like socks are knit with very fine yarn. And things like sweaters are maybe knit with more bulky yarn, like that. Knitting is just making a series of organized knots. And there are several different ways of casting on, but this is how the most basic one and the one that I always teach my students. There are only two types of stitches in knitting, and everything else is a variation on those two, and those are knits and purls. Through the back of the stitch, over the top, through the loop, and off. Through the back of the stitch, over the top, through the loop, and off. You go through the front of the stitch, over the noodle, through the loop, and off. So it's actually a knit stitch in reverse. It's very easy. Children can do it. But there's a huge online community. Um, there's a website called Ravelry.com. Um, that is a really wonderful resource for knitters. We can track our patterns and keep pick and we look at each other's patterns. We see what projects people have done if decide if we it's something that we want to do. After I graduated from college, I moved to Seattle and I was in a new place. I was unemployed for a while. And knitting, it's very meditative. It's very calming 
and it also makes you feel very productive. You're creating something. So during this time of unemployment and frustration, it was really a, um, a help to me to keep me from getting depressed. And, and then eventually, uh, it wasn't the first job that I got, but eventually I ended up working in a yarn store. So then I was surrounded with yarn and fiber all the time. And just being immersed in it all the time just took it to the next level in my life. 101 Designs, One Skein Wonders. My first published pattern that I was actually paid for. It is very warm. <laughs> and yeah, so I've probably written... Uh, Oh, I don't know, maybe 50 or 60 patterns. And I've had maybe half a dozen published. It's a lot of math, a lot of geometry. I have had people tell me, oh, I don't want to knit because there's so much math involved. But you don't have to make it heavy in math. It, you know, there, there are all sorts of things from knitting a scarf to knitting a complex um, sweater to knitting, you know, 3D objects like a doll or a stuffed animal. Um, and so it can be whatever you want it to be. But for me, I get a lot of enjoyment out of that logic and that structure. So I really enjoy that.